Oh yes! Whoa, what's happening with my hair? <laughs> Let's go! It's so muddy today. Oh, look at this, it's flooded. But this will be a perfect site. So in today's vlog, we are going to be discussing making raised beds. Now, this video was inspired from other YouTubers. I watched the channel of Epic Gardening, which apparently is Filipino also. He's uh, based in the States, but he has a lot of information out there if you guys want to know more about raised beds. I watched his videos and it, it serves as an inspiration. Also, there's another YouTuber that I watch, um, the, the Gardening Channel by James Prigioni, and he also has tons of useful information of planning your garden and living in a, an urban environment. So they both garden at home, they both garden in their houses or right outside their house, and it's, uh, it's great to watch, so you guys should subscribe, definitely check them out. And today we're gonna to be building our raised beds here. I got the ideas from them and we're gonna be measuring up the location and ordering some materials ready so that we can start. Um, what we're lacking here in King Tower Farm is actually the raised beds because we don't have any areas where we can plant all the root crop. Root crops like garlic, onions, ginger, radish, potatoes, sweet potatoes, cassava, and there's so many other more root crops that we are lacking here in the farm and our goal is to be able to make the raised bed so that we can actually use a hugel culture method in the raised bed and hopes that they can give us all the herbs. I also learned from the Epic Gardening channel, make sure you know your orientation to the sun so you know what is the maximum exposure because it's very important for your crops to get some sun. Roof, garden. So we're gonna have three beds total, four foot wide each. So we're gonna need 15 sheets total of eight foot GI roofing. Okay, next location. Yes, Leia. Oh wow, so I just got mud everywhere. It's, yeah, there, mud everywhere. It's pretty mushy today and I shouldn't really be driving around, but we're gonna be building the next raised bed system here, which is gonna be super huge and we're actually gonna replicate these guys. So these raised beds are actually falling apart already because they're made from flimsy rebar and some wood. Um, over time, they're not the best solution in terms of longevity but for temporary stuff like this then they actually work uh, what i've learned also your raised bed if you're going to do root crop should be a minimum of six inches but ideally you want to do 30 inches i am five foot eleven so i don't want to be bending down so much and the big problem here in Kalaraya is we have a bunch of termites so which means we're actually going to be elevating the raised beds off the ground to make sure that we actually save the wood that we're going to be putting inside it. Let's get to work. Over here on this side, we're actually going to build a huge cistern so that we can capture rainwater over the rainy season and use it to irrigate everything that you see here, except for the towers. The towers will have their own rainwater catchment system up there. Eventually, we're going to have uh, rainwater for the tower system also. Same thing, this is probably going to be boring, so we're just going to time lapse everything. So obviously we can't span the whole width of it, but the length we can maximize. So we're going to see 52 divided by 16 is 3.25. So we can do 16 times 3, 48 foot beds. So the question is, should we break the beds up or does it make sense to have one whole bed? Let's do one whole bed for the sake of construction. That's 52 8 foot sheets for this area that's a whole lot of GI roofing but it's gonna make a lot of raised beds which means we're gonna be able to grow a lot of amazing root crops people have been asking me also how we do our compost I actually 
am improving the way we process our compost. In between, I actually ordered a river harvesting machine which will allow us to capture the water hyacinth much faster so that we can use it for both the raised bed garden and also for the floating farm. We actually need the water hyacinth more than ever. I also instructed the team to start planting more bamboo because apparently bamboo mulch is super amazing. It doesn't really steal nitrogen from the soil and what yeah, I've been interrupted. Excuse me, Leia, I'm vlogging here. So the bamboo mulch is uh, interesting to use and bamboo grows super fast and it uh, replicates really easy. So we're definitely going to be planting a lot more bamboo all around the area so that by next year during summer, we're actually going to be able to mulch most of the fruit trees and all the other new trees that we've planted because we want to protect it from overheating and getting dried out. Um, also for these raised bed systems, I am planning an irrigation system which is going to be an automatic system. I have mud on my face, thank you Leia. I'm going to be on a timer for these raised beds so that we don't forget to water them because the, the last thing we need is more additional labor for some of the staff because I need them to focus on tending the flowers and tending to the vegetables in the tower systems. Okay. Back in the farm in our makeshift tent, the supplies for the raised grow beds have arrived. It's here on the floor. I have some angle bar here and the GI roofing is there. I'm going to be proceeding to make a mock-up kit so that uh, the staff can follow and do the rest because it's going to be a lot of work. We're going to section the angle bars and then bolt them all together and see if we can build a frame already. Work's gonna stop today because it's raining. Good morning, everyone. So it's 7 a.m., no one's here yet, and I'm going to try to finish at least one rail, one more rail. Ah. Uh. Everything looks good. The drill had to get wrapped because the rain could have gotten stronger. Yesterday, before my camera cut out and the rain came in, we were able to finish the lower rails and then some of the guide rails also on top, which means I need to make two more top rails and then we'll have a basic structure ready. Let's do the top rail so that we can try to see if this thing is gonna work. In my head, the design worked. And in actual, we're going to find out. All right, this isn't going according to plan. The holes are much harder to align than I expected and I think we're going to rebuild the structure just using welds. Also it's a bit heavy, I think we should have used a lower gauge steel, but this is what we have already so we gotta make do with it. I gotta get a bigger drill to help me align these holes and it's so heavy. After a long conversation with Wilson, we are going to change the design plans for the whole structure. So first off, the drilling took me too long and I don't think I want to go through all that for every bed that we're going to make. So we're actually just going to end up welding. Right now, 
all I'm gonna do is start cutting the braces. So cutting the braces there, cutting the braces there. And then I'm gonna check on the other project happening down in the water later. We're back and we took a day or two break because we actually had a typhoon that hit us. But today we borrowed a circular saw from Struan and we're gonna be proceeding to cut all the steel that we need so that the staff can weld it together. We decided to change the style. Instead of using the through bolts because the press drill was taking forever, we are going to be welding the frame together and using some structural supports, which means I just need to cut everything to spec so that the staff can weld it together. Quick update, I've finished quite a few number of bars but I'm going to be doing these last bars and then I'm going to take a break. We're going to go hit the water and then I will continue again tomorrow. But I had to order extra discs already for this guy because it doesn't look like we're going to complete everything with just one disc and it's pretty tiring, it's pretty heavy and I just nicked my my little screen on the GoPro. It now has burn marks from the sparks flying around. We're doing good progress and if it is not raining tomorrow, I will be welding some of the frames together so that we can start assembling some of these because after we assemble the frames, we do have to rust proof it and make sure that we get rid of all the rust before we paint it up. Everything that is getting cut is actually going to be turned into feet also because again, I don't want to waste too much materials in building this process. I also want to do a quick update on the raised bed. The staff have actually finished it for me because it involved a lot of welding. This is actually more welding than we initially planned. So they've put rebar bracing along with the flat bar bracing and we've found some old round legs to use for the bottom. But this is what it looks like now. This is our first prototype. This will be going to the roof they're welding everything together. I actually have them helping me out already because it's so heavy to work on these things. We have two of them assembled already and we're going to be placing them soon. The grow beds are finally ready. I know this project has taken longer than expected. It is past the new year already and we had some issues because of the rain. It's been very hard to actually build these frames because they do need to be painted and welded together. And as you can see, it's actually more rigid than I initially planned. We actually didn't plan to do any of this, but we did have a lot of spares for the rebar and the feet. So we ended up doing a cross bracing right here along with the extra rebar. So what's going to happen next is we're going to line this with chicken wire and after that we have some agricultural fabric so that we can prevent the little things from spilling out. 
As you saw, we are piling up the wood already. The wood is actually super dry. We've been saving this wood for such a long time. And it's going to be put in the base of the bed a la Hugel culture style. We're going to use the wood to help soak up the moisture. We are also going to be building a roof already over these things so that we know that the weather is too hot and the sun gets too extreme from time to time. So we're actually going to cover it ready to make sure that we don't get any heat problems or too much rain. Initially, I had planned the grow beds to go down this way, continuing the length of the whole roofing that we have here. But ever since we measured the right angle bar, I decided to actually just cut it in this sense and lay it out in this way so that we actually didn't have to cut too many times. So this made sense to us and we're working with the materials that we have and this is the outcome. Welcome back to a rainy day here at the farm. Yesterday was super sunny and today is the exact polar opposite. Um, today we're supposed to be finishing the raised grow beds. We're going to be making one sample so that they can continue the project while I'm away. Sorry if we have some water droplets on the lens. It is raining and this is going to be a wet build, but should be fairly quick. Here we have four raised beds already. We have quite a few more over there. And we're just going to line the beds with some roofing on the side panels. We're going to put chicken wire on the lower panels and then we're going to put the agricultural fabric also on the bottom so that it can catch all these small bits from going down. Biochar reactor, this is version 2, exhaust chimney stack along with the inner drum, outer drum and just a crack in the lid until we figure out how many holes to punch through. But today isn't about this, it's actually about our grow beds. After laying down the wood blocks we found this dried palm. And then after the dried palm, we put some dried grass, which is supposed to act like our straw. And after the dried grass, manure, compost, and some topsoil. And this is ready to go. Just compacting it to get it through some of the crevices. This will eventually sink down as the matter deteriorates. We finally laid down some cocoa fiber and then we're adding some compost and then after that we're going to put some manure and then lay it with some topsoil and then begin to start planting. So I've been reviewing the footage of this video and it's taken so long already. We started this project about October last year but because of the heavy rains and the bad weather we were delayed and delayed and delayed but now we finally have some produce growing here beside me we have some radish although it seems to be being devastated by a bug we have some carrots over here here beside me this is some kong kong we didn't plant the kong kong but it's growing there so that means there was some kong kong in the seeds sorry there was some kong kong in the compost prior to us putting it down uh, over here on my opposite side we have some garlic and onions so those aren't growing just yet. I just wanted to share with you guys that the project 
seems to be working really well. As you can see here, my farmers are pretty happy with the results for the grow bed right here. And again, uh, this system is a combination of hugel culture and a raised bed system. And I just want to share with you guys that it works and we're going to be proceeding to be fixing the beds on the other side of the farm so that we can grow more root crops and hopefully share it with you guys. So I'm going to end the vlog here. If you guys like this long format video, please let me know your comments down below. Anyway, I'll see you guys again in the next video. Peace.